What is a true intellectual? Are scholars, experts, professors, are those opinion leaders with a large following? Our trust in intellectuals stems from submission to authority, independent thinking? The content of this issue will be according to two clues of etymology and key opinions, glimpsing another side of the intellectual label. Speaking of the concept of intellectuals, was first proposed by the Russian writer Popovkin in 1860. Intellectuals probably emerged in the 1930s and 1940s, introduced German classical philosophy. Those scholars introduced to Russia, under the influence of philosophical education, quickly realized, in Russia at that time, is an extremely backward authoritarian system. This group of people who are at odds with mainstream opinions, has been called intellectuals. So the concept of intellectuals from the beginning, it is not divided based on professional class. This means that no matter which university you work for, or what title of a PhD professor you hold, you can be called an intellectual. First, you need to have this courage to be in tension with mainstream opinions. If you do not possess this temperament, then the identity of an intellectual cannot be discussed. Of course, today's intellectuals have another origin, which is a bit later in France. In 1894, Captain Alfred Dreyfus of France was falsely accused of being a traitor to the country because of his Jewish identity. In 1898, the writer Zola, on October 15th, in the midst of the state of confusion, that the army is aging. This is not the case for the squadron commander of the general staff. Squadron commander of the general staff, who on October 15th is involved in his column, drafted an open letter to the president of the, of the republic this squadron order. commander. The artillery division commandant Terry de Kayla General Mercou drafted an open letter to the president of the republic. The title of my complaint dated October 15th is that in the big U, commanding the Brigade Inton Leduc CP, the Jena Bigay, commanding the Brigade Inton, the second in command of the artillery division of the Accord de Leduchin, out of rank RTYRNAUX Saksu Street, that in the era of that General Uransa is called Chief of Ezra. The second the General Staff, Mayor T. Wei Wokong Su, was on October 15th. Represented individuals that read a few books. division of Chedi requested a retrial of the Brian Sky's colleagues' big U. He requested a retrial of the Brian Sky's colleagues' big U. Senior artillery squadron leader. This group spoke out for the active sections of the staff of the individuals who criticized social justice. General Mercier announced his colleagues by their opposing forces, disdainfully referred to as intellectuals. In other words, the term, intellectuals, originally had negative connotations in France. It represented an image of individuals who have read a few books. Self-righteous. Dissidents who sought to confront state authority. O-sellers from the district M, A chain, R. Those who sought to challenge the authority of the state were subjected to a government order to impose a 15-day prison sentence on district councillors. Mr. Mr. Armstrong had been detained and had been imposed in order to be detained at that time. People in Lashley started working in the district neighborhood. The, first the first results were necessary. necessary. Were starting to show. Very happy to accept Dreyfus such a title. Dreyfus did not really district understand until his political friends showed Dreyfus. how necessary really this creation district was. Mr. Archain, Porge. Very happy to accept such a title. District councillors, Mr. Archain, the publication of this manifestation was the sentence of the day. The district councillors were not able to see what was going on. The first results of the creation was not able to see what was going on. The first results of the creation was not able to see what was going on. Mr. Archain, the first results of the creation was not able to see what was going on. The first results of the creation was not able to see what was going on. The first results of the creation was not able to see what was going on. Strictly speaking, the definition of intellectuals only began to emerge in modern times. Our ancient Chinese literati belong to the intellectual class. Chosen. It is the same as scholars and experts today, such as professors and other professional identities. Alex. Is not within the scope of our discussion this time. Chosen. So, next. I will select a few. Since modern times. On the concept of intellectuals. Representative scholarly views. To provide a reference scale for everyone. The first one is the famous German sociologist. Karl Mannheim. He once put forward a very interesting viewpoint. Called the free-floating intellectual. He believes intellectuals have two basic characteristics. One is free-floating. The other is non-attachment. The so-called non-attachment means not being attached to any class or social stratum. This is the prerequisite for his free-floating, and also the prerequisite for his intellectual freedom, and the prerequisite for a fair attitude, so they are not bound by any specific class. This kind of intellectual can understand the partial truths of different perspectives. The second one was born in Germany. The sociologist Lou Yizikos who later immigrated to the United States. In one of his representative works, there is one called, The Idea Man. Cusset believes that intellectuals are people born for ideas. Not people who make a living by ideas. They are the gatekeepers of ideas. They are the enlighteners of ideology. Even though these ideas, often face rejection and discrimination from people. But in the past several centuries, they have undertaken in the history of Western thought, a role akin to pioneers. Therefore, Cusset believes, establishing their own critical attitude, preaching in ignorance, condemning the oppression of the public by authority, is a primary characteristic of an intellectual. Thirdly, is the renowned literary critic from Palestine, Edward Waddellseed. In Waddellseed's theory of intellectuals, we can see, he believes that compared to those professionals, intellectuals are amateurs. This so-called amateurism, it emphasizes the independence of intellectuals. Said believes, intellectuals are neither mediators of conflicts, nor do they attempt to establish consensus. Intellectuals should wholeheartedly engage in criticism. They are unwilling to accept a simple ready-made. 
standard answer of cliches. They are even less likely to curry favor with authority, nor will they flatter traditional views and practices. In Said's view, intellectuals should play the role of questioners. Rather than that of advisors, Said believes that in outdated notions, a person seems to be both an intellectual and can maintain an ambiguous relationship with power. This is something Said finds hard to agree with, because he simply does not believe that anyone can, while holding a position of authority, be called what he defines as an intellectual. The fourth is the famous British thinker Bauman. Bauman once in legislators and interpreters, in his book, Modernity and the Holocaust. Through the image of legislators and interpreters, metaphorized intellectuals, the changes in their social position, he believed that in the old days, intellectuals firmly believed that society and history were governed by universal laws. History always developed according to specific causal laws, while those intellectuals saw these universal laws as legislating for the world. As principles for legislating society, in the Enlightenment era of the 17th and 18th centuries, the role of intellectuals was that of thought leaders in society. They played a challenging role, challenging authority and tradition, challenging authority and tradition. At the same time, they also bore the duty to criticize social injustice and moral decline. Intellectuals were like legislators of society. They were the ones proposing novel ideas and reform proposals, such as establishing order and stabilizing structures. These are also emphasized by modernity. Postmodernity emphasizes fluidity, diversity and uncertainty. Modern states control politics through discourse and public opinion. Gradually, intellectuals start to move away from the center of political power. Intellectuals in an increasingly institutionalized academic world gain freedom of expression, but they become disconnected from social reality and develop a sense of distance from the general public. They feel a distance from the general public. Intellectuals' determination to legislate for the world suffers a serious blow. This changes the social role of intellectuals. In Bowman's view, postmodern intellectuals shift from radical to conservative. In the current environment, attempting to demand that intellectuals, like in the Enlightenment era, make radical and practical political suggestions is simply not possible. Therefore, intellectuals take on an additional role as interpreters. This means that besides presenting new perspectives, they also have to explain many complex social phenomena, helping the public understand their current situation. This is the end. Believe we have achieved basic understanding of intellectuals. Intellectuals probably refer to those with a spirit of questioning, thinking independently with reason, engaging in discussions on social issues. They must bear tense relationship with mainstream voices. For the pursuit of truth and revelation of reality, they must have a strong sense of mission. Moreover, intellectuals' words and actions must have a public nature. This also makes intellectuals distinguishable from ordinary experts, scholars, professors, or professionals in a certain field. Quoting Einstein, when a scientist participates in nuclear experiments, he is not an intellectual, but when he signs his name on an anti-nuclear war manifesto, signs his own name, he becomes an intellectual. Through the above understanding, we will find this group of intellectuals. The focus is on the public interest. So we are looking at it from a public perspective, naturally have a favorable impression of intellectuals. We find that intellectuals in the true sense cannot kneel to money and power. Even if they kneel, they must also prostrate themselves in truth, under truth and careful reason. But we must realize soberly, intellectuals are not the spokespersons of truth on earth. Intellectuals can also make mistakes, including them. We need to treat everyone's opinions carefully. We all need to handle with caution. According to Saul's view, knowledge itself is a kind of power. Intellectuals have immense power. They just need to work diligently at their desks, express their own thoughts. They can gather supporters and spread around themselves gather a group of followers and propagators. They can thereby have a huge impact on society. If these ideas being spread are wrong, society will be dragged into great disasters. Often, after these disasters occur, people tend to criticize these politicians more and overlook the strategizing behind the scenes, the intellectuals who wave flags and shout slogans. From this perspective, the power of intellectuals, there exists a huge imbalance of power and responsibility. So how do we discern these erroneous ideas? or poison the intellectuals in society. Sowell also provides us with two criteria. As a reference, the first is called the sanctification concept. In Sowell's view, no society can escape good and evil. In human history, has never created a perfect utopia, nor will it be possible to create such a perfect society in the future. A good intellectual never promises the public the best or most authoritative or the most correct thing, but carefully seeks the least bad thing. The second is linguistic skill. Sowell believes the majority of intellectuals enthusiastic about praising their ideal vision, to the point where they live in a world of their own imagination. Furthermore, showing off words is their specialty. So when faced with obvious mistakes, they are also very good at filtering out facts, thus emphasizing only materials that benefit themselves. 
to the extent that they don't even need to act personally. Those loyal fans will actively seek rationalizations for his wrongdoings, finding justifications through Sowell's Intellectuals and Society book. We can find an intellectual how, amidst the applause of fans and the spotlight of society, he examines himself, which is a fundamental obligation he can never escape. When intellectuals are in public spaces, holding a certain degree of discourse power, he must clearly realize his ideas and actions will have a potential impact on society. If an intellectual loses basic conscience, can only become the evil dog nurtured by the wealthy Atif. Those intellectuals who have lost the ability of self-reflection can only bask in the adulation, become a fanatic totem of anti-intellectualism. When we revisit the death of Socrates, perhaps then we can understand. Socrates' voluntary death ensured a less bad system, at least democratic Athens, still retained the power to judge a thought leader. And what about Plato's ideal state? Not ideal at all. The one ruled by the highest wisdom and morality. The philosopher king ruled by the highest reason ultimately still a complete lie. Even in the history of philosophy, we still have moral role models like Spinoza. And as today, can we ensure that the objects of our admiration are not inferior to Spinoza at all? Today, when facing those we admire. Even when talking about intellectuals who are greatly admired, can we dispel the charm of the philosopher king in our hearts?